Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the ATI T's Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100 and 26 and we are on page number 79 please turn to it page 79 if you decide that you want to get some more practice to get better prepared for the exam and if you wish you could actually solve all the problems that appeared in the previous editions as well it will as I said get you better prepared for the exam and if you wish to do that you will find that the solutions to all the math problems that appeared in this fifth edition we have already done them from day number 1 through 80. Just type in T is day 1 and you will see the series it goes from day 1 through 80 as I said there are no videos from 81 through 100. Let's get going. In question number 1 it says it says as Mary has entered some sort of fitness regime it's important that you have the book in front of you otherwise you will have trouble following me. Uh, apparently she has entered a fitness regime where she has decided to go for a walk during her lunch break and she has kept a log of her work and here's the log unfortunately it's partial it's not a complete record this is what we find we find at the end of day three she has taken 1248 steps at the, at the end of day number seven she has taken 2912 steps at the end of day 22nd she has taken a total of 9152 steps and so on and so forth the question is based on the records that we have what sort of conclusion that can we draw among the four statements that are given here which one of the four statements would apply let's take a look oh interesting before they publish this book here before this publish this this book here the sixth edition that I'm showing you it is a sixth edition they had another book in the market that they had published previously which is also the sixth edition as you can see this is sixth edition they withdrew this book from the market because it had too many errors, too many mistakes in it. They supposedly corrected those errors and they published a new book, same edition, after the corrections. What I find interesting in this problem is that this lady, when she appears in the problem, she likes to be called Nancy. And I noticed that when she appears in the answer choices, she prefers to be he prefers to be addressed as Mary. Oh well. So, what's wrong with number one? Answer choice A. Well, there are a couple of things that are wrong with it. One is that the way it is written here, it says this quantity is equal to this quantity. Had they said instead of equal to, instead of equal to, had they said approximately equal to, approximately equal to that would have been okay that would have been valid but that's not what they're claiming they're claiming that this quantity that you see here on the left hand side is equal to this quantity let's see what this quantity actually works out to be if you were to take this quantity this 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 fraction and multiply it top and bottom by 1000 and it's okay to do that if you have a fraction if you multiply both the top and the bottom by the same quantity the fractions does not change it's, it's still the same fraction 1 over 2 multiplied by 5 over 5 will just give you 5 over 10. It's still 5 over 10, it's still 1 over, it's still half. It doesn't change the value. Once you do that, we know that 1000 times 2 is 2000. 1000 times 2 is 2000. We move the decimal place 3 spots. And if you have 2000, move the decimal place 2 spots, uh, 3 spots, you end up with 2. 2 over 1000. 2 over 1000. Because you see there is a 1000 here. And when it says step here, it's actually one step. So 1 times 1000 is 1000 and this is on the top we have days, at the bottom we have steps and if you reduce it we end up with 1 over 500. Two things that are wrong, two things that, two things are wrong with this thing. First is that this quantity tells us, this quantity the way it's written here, it tells us that it takes her it takes our point 
0.002 day, not half a day, not tenth of a day, not a thousandth of a day, but two thousandth of a day to take one step. But we're not interested in how many days it takes to take one step. We are interested in knowing how many steps she takes in one day. This quantity is a reciprocal of what we want. It is a reciprocal of what we want. Typically when we talk about the rate, we are interested in how many steps she takes in a day. We are not interested in how many days it takes to take one step, which is a worthless information. Nobody goes around saying, well, you are not going to believe uh, how fast I am going because it takes me only point. 0, 0, 0, 0.002 day to two one hundredth to one thousand rather to one thousandth of a day to take one step. That's ridiculous. That's not what we want. The second thing that is wrong with it is that now we realize that if you were to do the calculation out, it comes out to be one over five hundred, which says which tells us that it takes which tells us that in one day, if you were to take the reciprocal of this thing, it tells us that in one day she takes five hundred steps. That is clearly not the case. If she took 500 steps on an average day, at the end of the third day, she would have taken 1500 steps. At the end of the seventh day, she would have had 3500 steps. At the end of 20th day, well, 10th day would have been 500, so it would be 1000 steps. As you can clearly see, rather 10,000 steps. As you can clearly see, she only took 8000 steps. At the end of the uh, 22nd day, at the rate of 500 steps per day, she would have taken 11,000 steps. She is not going that fast. She is not taking 500 days on an average day when she goes out for a walk during her lunch break. She is taking something closer to 400 steps. Because you see, 400 times 4 times 3 is 12. This is a 1200 step. 4 times 7 is. <coughs> Four sevens are 28. That would have been 2,800. This would have been exactly 8,000. She's taking some, somewhere around 400 steps. She's not taking 500 steps. This would have been correct, as I said, if they said approximately equal to. So that's one thing that is wrong with it. Second thing that is wrong with this answer choice is that the information that they're giving us is the reciprocal of what we're actually looking for. We're not looking for this. We're not looking for how many days it takes her to take one step. We're interested in knowing how many steps she can take, she does take, in one day. A does not apply. Let's take a look at B. I'm going to pick up sp speed a little bit because I feel all of a sudden that I'm going there's too much of a leisurely pace. Number two. Let's, let's, let's raise this thing so we have room. Number two. We don't need any of that. Number two says Number two says the unit rate is unit rate is twelve hundred and forty-eight steps in three days. It is true. This statement is true. It is true. So then what's wrong with it? What is wrong with this statement is that the unit rate is always, what is wrong with it is that the rate, the unit rate is always expressed as per unit, not per three units. Now, I ain't no genius, but something tells me that that's probably why it is called the unit rate. Which is probably why the bloody thing is called the unit rate and not per three units rate. Unit rate has to be expressed as per one something, per unit something. It cannot be per three. It is correct, but it's not expressed in the proper form. It has to be so many steps in one day. This is not per day. This is not per unit day. Per 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 unit, but it's a per three units. It's no good. Units, units are always expressed, the rates or proportion are always expressed as unit, per unit rather, per unit. For example, 
I need the room. For example, let's erase all of this thing. For example, let me give you some example so you can see the, the silliness in it. So you can see the absurdity in answer choice B. For example, if, you, if, if you're talking about somebody's speed, if somebody asks you how, far did you how fast did you drive today, this morning, to your work, you would say, I went 30 miles per hour. We do not say, we do not say, I went 60 miles per two hours. Although, this is not, this is not a lie. I did go at the rate of 60 miles per two hour, but that's not how we express the unit rate, which is why, as we said already, it's called unit rate and not per two units rate. Unit rate has to be expressed as per one unit. I went 30 miles per one hour, not 60 miles per two hours. Another example would be if if you're going for if you're if if you if you're sitting there for a job interview. If you're going for a job interview and the boss uh, and, the, and the guy who is interviewing you asks you how fast can you type, don't try to be cute and tell the person, well, I can type, I can type 120 words for three minutes and I'm going to get the job. It's better to simply tell the person that you type 40 words per, per minute rather, not per hour. Forty words per minute is what you want to tell them. Do not tell them. Do not tell them that you type 120 words per three minutes. Because that's not how we speak. That's not how we, that, is, that is not how we communicate. Another example would be if you have a mixture, you would say you want to mix four quarts per gallon. We do not say. We do not say. We want to meet mix eight quart per two gallon. That's not what we say. If somebody asks you again one more time, if somebody asks you what was your speed, do not tell them, do not tell them that I go 30 miles per 20 minutes. That's not how we express our speed. It has to be per you per, per one unit. So you have to tell me how many miles you go per minute, per one minute, or how many miles you go per one hour. Well, when I say per one hour or per one minute, I hope you're able to see that that is redundant. Because per means one. So, don't tell me that you can, you, 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 how fast did you go this morning? How fast did you drive? Don't tell me that you drove 10 miles every 20 minutes. Tell me how many miles did you go what, per, per minute? Or how fast did you go per hour? How can we convert this into hours? It's very easy. How many, how many minutes in an hour? An hour has 60 minutes. An hour has 60 minutes, doesn't it? At the bottom we have 20. How can I convert this 20 into a 60? Because if we can get 60 minutes at the bottom, that's per one hour. Well, what number times 20 is 60? Well, 20 times 3 is 60. Since we multiply the bottom by 3, we must multiply the top by 3. And now you find that 10 times 3 is 30. 30 miles. And 20 times 3 is 60 minutes. Now we can say the same same concept as as 30 miles 30 miles per hour not 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 10 miles per 20 minutes it's 30 miles per hour same as this guy same as that guy 30 miles per hour let's do one more how about this one we do not say we do not say uh, mixed 84 milliliter of this chemical, this medicine, into 42 liters. That's not how you would express it. That's not how the instructions will come. They will tell you to put 2 milliliter of this chemical per 1 liter. Before you give it to the patient, it has to be mixed in this way. It has to be 2 milliliter of this particular medicine mixed with one, one liter of water or one liter of some other solution. We would not say mix 42 liter uh, of, the, of, the, of the original of the, of the, of the, of the 
water with 84 milliliter of the chemical. It doesn't work that way, even though these two are same quantity. And how do we know this is the same quantity? Because this is 2 milliliter per 1 liter. If you multiply top and bottom by 42, if you multiply top and bottom by 42, 42 times 2 is 84, 84 milliliter, and 42 times 1 is 42. You see, they are the same quantity. But that is not how we speak. We speak this way. It has to be per unit. Do you understand? Now, if you're wondering why I made so much fuss about this thing here, you will see the wisdom of this thing in problem number three. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Thank you.